What's up guys, how's it going? Um, I'm going to show you guys an application I've been writing. It is in Node.js. Um, I'm doing, um, using a few technologies like uh, EGS as a templating engine. But basically what it is, is it's kind of like a dashboard for widgets of all kinds. For example, the YouTube um, widget will be able to, you'll be able to type in what video you want, hit play, and it will play the first hit on YouTube and on in full screen basically and you can program it to do it at a certain time if you really wanted to but um, I also have the API um, for Spotify integrated so you can search for songs on Spotify and it will actually use the Spotify helper um, to control your local Spotify client um, so for example if I put this right here and put that like that if I search in like that it will automatically start playing on my Spotify and I can do this from a mobile phone any any device on my LAN um, I can control it um, if I'm VPN into my home machine you know, if you have a VPN server or something like that you can do it that way too but you know on your LAN you know and it controls your Spotify um, of course, here if you do that and hit pause, toast come up and it says pause. And here's the server console. And we can see when we hit pause and these play, it all reacts accordingly. Um, it's printing out you know the track URI, all that stuff we need, and we'll look at that a little bit later um, and how that's happening. Here's the search query, all that type of stuff. But as you can see, it's controlling that. And so we can actually even type in, let's say we'll use that as an example too, hit that. It will automatically start playing the video in full screen on your machine. And eventually I'm gonna add some things to be able to control, pause, play, seek, all that type of stuff straight from the web GUI. But as you can see, it works really well. It happens real fast um, and it works great. But there's a few things we need to do to make that actually happen. For first off, for to get all these pretty effects and you know look at that animation, um, and to get all this, I'm using Materialize CSS. So it's one of my favorite. It's probably it's my favorite uh, CSS frameworks. Um, they have all kinds of things. For example, if you go into here, it tells you about the grids and how to use these, how to use columns. It's really well documented. It's about as easy as it gets, um, and it's great. So what we really want to look at is the server-side code. So here is the main file, and here are all my dependencies. So for example, here you know are all my require you know statements so you're gonna need express you're gonna need FS you know request pass execute you know or, you know child process um, YouTube node and that that's for doing all the YouTube interacting with the YouTube API you know just makes it super easy you don't have to do your own get request it just has kind of in its own little function um, body parser and Spotify web API node so just look these all up on um, NPM and just download them. Um, you might need more, you might need, need less, um, but these are kind of the ones you're going to need for what I got going right now. Um, and then you're going to ha actually have to set your your API key for communicating with the YouTube API. So you'll set that here, and, and of course if you look on NPM, the documentation for each of these libraries um, are are well documented of course so they'll they'll tell you on how to to implement these and obviously it's not very pretty code right now it's really messy I haven't I haven't really done much work I've just kind of sloppily glued everything together um, but here it is so you want to pop that API key in and there's also one other part we're going to be using the Spotify API which credentials are not required but I recommend them because 
based on your your credentials, it will give you tailored um, results back when you do queries through Spotify. So if you look up a song that you know, typically their algorithm will give you another song, but it sees that you've been listening to this one song a lot lately, it will actually play the song you've been playing a lot lately in the past rather than this, the regular search result that would normally come up if they didn't know you. So definitely do that. And where you want to do that is, at least where I have it right now, is I put it right here. So you, you can search Google search, get client ID from Spotify, and you'll be able to find this. But basically, you, you pop in the, your client ID and your client secret, and then you're good to go. Whew. So... And then what's happening is I'm using the Spotify web web helper or yeah Spotify web API node and that's what I'm calling in these so when I get a request of Spotify pause um, and of course a post request I I execute this action the console logs it it actually pauses it sends it, it basically uses the code in that that library to send an HTTP request to Spotify, which it's a special type of thing, and you got to do all kinds of stuff. So that's why I'm using it and not creating my own request. Um, so I'll pause it, and then I'll send a request back to the, the browser saying paused. So same with the same thing with the Spotify Play, all that type of stuff. With this, I'm actually doing a GET request. Um, and Spotify search so you do that and then what it's actually getting is it will get this right here it will which is a variable set to the string we got over here so we actually have let's say YouTube let's say so it's YouTube search and we got a form here and the action is here but we're actually needing to get this input, which is query, type is text, right? And that is this right here. We're needing this, these type of things. We need to get the text information, the strings from that, your query, to pass that in to the functions to search the API and to get a result back. So we get that and then we actually we get that request and we set it as a variable x console log it for debugging purposes of course and then I pass that in to the Spotify API dot search tracks and then it will search everything blah 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 but you want to you, you want to pass that in and then once you get a response back in the form of data you're gonna get, try get a whole bunch of information so you're going to need to parse through that information. So I kind of had to mess with it a little bit, but you can kind of get, I believe it's coming back in JSON, so you can actually filter right through it. So it's data.body.tracks.items.index0.uri, and that will get you the track URI. And it's actually pretty, like, it's pretty powerful because you can actually get a lot more because sometimes it'll even actually give you you know if a song doesn't come up it'll give you an artist that type of stuff it's really flexible like that but we're actually setting that after we console log it just for debugging purposes we're actually setting that to spot uri as a variable spot uri and then we're of course doing the same thing but we're actually getting an album image and we're getting the url of that and then we're going to later toss that into the download function, which will save it as uh, Spotify current .png in our root of our folder, and then we'll re later reference that in the EGAS file or HTML, whatever you want to call it, you know, of course. Um, and we'll later reference that up here if I can find it. Let's see. There we go. We we're re referencing it right here okay but the problem is when we search a new song 
and it downloads a new image, the, the source of the image does not change. And that's a problem. So what we need to do is figure out how to get the browser to update this image even though it's the same source. Because what will happen is the web browser will actually just display the old one because it won't, won't load the new one because it will cache the old image in the browser and then it says, wow, that's the same image. So no, no reason to waste resources by updating. It's the same thing. So we got to somehow figure out a way to trick the browser into thinking or basically telling it that's a new image every time it reloads the page. So what we need to do is come down here in the local client side JavaScript. We set this little function here, which that will put a timestamp at the end of the source on that. So, so we're actually doing, if you make sure you get this question mark, because after that, the browser will kind of ignore that, but it will notice it that it's a different source. So then it will update. It's kind of a little trick, but it works. So, and it sets, you know, the current time and stuff like that. And it's happens every hundred milliseconds, I believe is what it's in. So that's that. And also, you know, of course, I'm setting post requests for when, you know, spot play track gets clicked, you know, you know, posting, and then, you know, of course, these handle it. But anyways, it downloads the image. And of course, I console log the image URL to make sure I'm getting the right response and filtering it through correctly. And then I'm tossing the spot URI, which is the track URI we get back from Spotify. And we toss that in to helper.player.play. And then that will play the Spotify track. And, and we're, it, we're done. You know, and of course, it'll console if it errors. And then at the end of it all, we re-render the home page. And it's basically the same story with YouTube. It's a little bit shorter. Um, the only magic here is once we get the results back from the query, you know, of course, we're passing it in and YouTube search, and then we pass in our string from client side. On the else, you know, if error, console logs errors out. But on the else, of course, you have x equals the generic youtube.com slash watch you know this is always the same for every youtube video but it's after the the equal signs that's where the video id is so we set that equal to x and then we set the variable y equal to the video id and then that we concatenate it at the end here so i'm using i'm basically just doing you know executing this application basically through the you know the command line that's basically it that's I'm doing it through a really you know it's kind of clunky and it's probably not the correct way you could do a VLC bindings but you know I just want to get something up and running quickly so that's what I did so you know it executes and yeah I execute VLC and VLC has really good options for um, command line um, switches so then you do via full screen and you can do things like exit after playback which will exit the video or exit VLC as soon as the video is done playing but after that you know we put a space but then we concatenate these two variables together so the X variable string and the Y variable string so it can it concatenates into one solid YouTube URL that we can use to play the video with VLC because it just takes a, a, you know a, a YouTube URL just fine and it works and then of course we render back to the home directory you know and we handle that request with that and it renders our home EGS page um, and that's kind of how that works um, that's it's really easy to add these new you could you know of course add a new request handler um, you can just add them as much as you want and you can add the functionality as much as you want you can you can do anything really 
So I'm working on getting one so I can control my garage door. Not very hard, but I need to get some need Raspberry Pis in some relays and stuff like that put together and they're all in boxes and stuff like that. So I'm gonna get that going and then I'll be able to control my garage door from here. I'll be able to control everything. So as you can see, you know, it just works. It just works. And and it's quite cool because I can I can access it from my phone. So if I go here, it will actually load, if you can see it here, focus, it'll actually load here. And if I take, you know, do a search on Spotify, if I do Island in the Sun, and I hit go, oh, I typed that wrong, but it will update the image and it will play just fine. So that is really cool. Um, also, um, you can pretty much add anything. So let me know what I should add. Um, if you liked it, give me a like. If you want more of these videos, let me know. I can kind of go into a little bit more detail, kind of show you step by step on how to do this and um, kind of keep you up to date on future progress. So give me a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.